What is up, y'all? Welcome back to episode 52 of Marlins Franchise. We've got a lot to cover in this episode, so we're just going to get right into it. First, a couple updates on a couple of RJs. You guys remember the one that got away, RJ Mayer? He was originally the one who got away. He had 90, he had 90 range, 90 defensive range in the outfield. And uh, I wanted to draft him. I waited, I waited, I waited. He went in like the 16th round. Yeah, I just kept playing chicken with it. The Brewers took him, and I was like, I got to have that guy. I got to see what 90 range can do. So I went and ended up getting him for the same 16th round pick. I was just like, here, take another 16th round pick. Give him to us. I want to see. And nothing really amounted from it because, I mean, he just he can't hit. He could not hit at all. Um, this this is about what his projection was, I think, even at the beginning, you know. I guess there's a little tinge of some uh, power upside up to 45, maybe. Ooh, or a 40 contact, maybe. Ooh, a 40 eye. But it was always about that defense. I just wanted to see how it went, and I ended up cutting him. So that's one RJ. But the RJ that you guys care about is the one that I have bad news on. RJ Austin, remember the independent league god? Well, he retired. We wanted to sign him last year. Remember, we kept getting those um, notices about how well he was doing because he was on a short list with, from the high-risk bats all the way back in the 2022 draft. He was dominating. He had 49 homers in 308 plate appearances. The sickest run. Even, even factoring in that it's indie ball, that's amazing. I'm sorry. Like, And all you need to really know about that, here's a, a great great example of how useful though that wrc plus is because you put up a 180 which is a wonderful number and it does explain how he even for the fact that that league was easy or easier he was still doing something pretty special however to really understand uh just where that ind independent league kind of sits a 1568 ops only netting a 180 wrc plus really tells you where we're living um, because normally i mean i don't even have a good frame of reference for what a 1568 wrc plus would do or would net as a wrc plus because nobody does that but i'm pretty sure it would be remarkably higher than than 180 in the majors let's just here the best context that i can think for that real quick is just harper's season his mvp season when he had a 198 ops plus he put up an 1109 ops in the majors that year 2015 or just last year 1044 ops was good for a 179 and that's the thing that the the ops plus or the wrc plus scales to where the league is and in this independent league you just wake up hitting 300 so you got to do something special to really move the needle that's why a 1568 is only a 180 but anyway he retired the reason we didn't sign him last year is because we had no money we were broke bitches and so we had no money so that happened um there's also the j2 we did the j2 signing which is the international free agency it's called j2 it usually happens on july 2nd that's why it's called that or that's when it starts and we got two guys we made we made some moves here we got two guys the prize, the you know, number one guy here is Jesus Barrera, a 75 potential uh, right now, with 85 contact, 70 gap, 60 home run, 50 I, 65 avoid Ks. He's a speedy guy. He's got some adaptability. He's not greedy. He can shut out the stress and put it on automatic. He's a shit defender. Uh, 45 potential at second, 35 at third, 30 at short. Um, and the and the the ratings aren't very good either 45 range 50 error 45 arm 55 dp not much for the outfield either 40 50 40 so that's that's the part that's tough however he's 16 so perhaps we can see some development you know he's got that high adaptability he should adapt to knowing how to play some defense but i'm excited got barrera nicknamed cuz i guess uh for 2.8 milli so we had a little bit of extra uh, with him being a 70 potential, or excuse me, it says 80 potential now. Did it not? Oh, that was OSA. OSA says 75. Our guy says 80. So Greenwell was like, nah, he's an 80, bro. Uh, to get him at under the 5 mil, that was wonderful. So we had enough to get somebody else, and we got Sergio Haro, a pitcher, 55 potential for 
750,000, a steal. We killed J2 this year. He's got 70 potential stuff, and then 45 on the movement and control, 50 stamina, 60 hold runner, high work ethic, low greed, which is true because he wasn't asking for much. And he's already durable at 18, which is good. It's at least it's a good starting point, right? It can always change, but at least we're starting from the strongest point that you can, because obviously that's even better than the normal um starting starting point so i'm really excited about haro especially at 750k thought he was an absolute steal so then uh you remember that or you might remember and if you don't i'm, I'm filling you in june didn't end so well we weren't playing great we had a 13 and 15 month we kind of fell off a bit uh, after the 19 and 10 may and it's like okay well what's what's going on here uh, we need to get back on track. You know, 13, 15, you can survive that. That's not a season killer by any stretch, but it was a it was a sting. Took us out of first, put us a few games behind. We went five and one in July, so we did start to make that uh, that little bit of a recovery. That we're like, okay, come on, we know we're better than this, so it makes sense that we would make such a recovery. However, it wasn't cost free. And uh, I should have set this up beforehand. Pardon me. I think I can set this up real quick to show you because I'm not happy about it and you're not going to be either. And it's not showing it. Okay, hang on. Please hold. <laughs> fail. Absolute fail. I guess OBS can't show, or Streamlabs OBS, baby OBS, if you will, because I'm not an actual adult, can't show the uh, photos program for some reason. I don't know. I don't know these things. Hang on, I'm bringing up a standard, standard old screenshot. It's bad news. I should be holding off. But Julio Rodriguez got hurt. Okay, that's the news. Six weeks, strained groin muscle. Uh, it was July 3rd when it happened. It's now July 11th, so it's been about a week. So there's five weeks left. So that sucks. At least uh, if you're ever gonna have to get an injury like this. At least it comes during the All-Star break. That's the best I can, best spin I can put on it. At least it came during the break. So he goes out, J-Rod does. It did create an opportunity, though. And we made a big call-up. Danny Rodriguez, come on down. Now, Danny Rodriguez, um, wait, he never made the prospect list? I thought he did. I thought he did. Never mind. I thought he was a top 100 prospect. But anyway, he is a prospect of note in our organization. Um, just a 50 potential right now. He, I thought he had hires. Yeah, he did. He was. Okay. So we got Danny Rodriguez um, on a contract out of Mexico. I, did the computer just sign him like randomly? 10-29-2024. Uh, signed minor league contract out of Mexico. I don't recall actually doing that. So I'm not going to take full credit for it. I think it might have just been our scouts. So, hey, good on them. But anyway, it's kind of risen up the rankings. Obviously shed a good bit of that initial upside there when he was tabbed as a 70 potential, but has developed into something pretty useful. He's uh, currently a 60, 55, 45, 40, 60 with the potential to push the contact up to 65, uh, the eye up to 45, and the avoid Ks up to 70. Not bad. Very speedy, too. 85 speed, 70 stealing, 65 base running. Uh, okay defender. More on a corner. He's got 55s across the board on the range, error arm. Um, he has 60 upside in left, 35 in center, 55 in right. That all checks out. Uh, pretty good profile, though, too. Puts in long hours and a smart one on and off the field, but he shows few loyalty traits or loyal traits. So he's low leader, low loyalty. That's fine. I don't need you to be a leader. That one doesn't really bother me. We got plenty of leaders. I always kind of keep the, the team chemistry cooking with things like that. So I'm not worried there. And as far as loyalty, if we throw you the money, you're going to sign. You know, he's got high greed, but also high adaptability, work ethic, and intelligence. So there's upside here from the 22-year-old. He was in AAA playing terribly, and yet I still gave him the call because I'm kind of betting on the skills here. Um, and there's not even like a reason for his 52 WRC plus like, oh, he has a, he has a 105 BABIP. Nah, it's 286, which is like, okay. Uh, just things not working out for him in 304 AAA appearances. And the interesting thing is this is a little bit of a fast tracking because he spent a bunch of time in rookie ball. And then I've had him in high A for like a second last year. 
and then AAA this year. So I jumped him. I jumped him a good bit for sure. Well, now he's in the majors and 14 plate appearances in. He's he's doing okay. I mean, that, that means nothing. It's 14 plate appearances. Who cares? But I figure, give him a shot. His, he's angry about team record. Maybe he just hasn't adjusted to ours yet, but I don't want it. I don't want to hear that bullshit. He should not be angry about our team record at all. Frankly, he shouldn't be that angry about his performance yet either. Even though it's only 14 plate appearances, he's at least doing well. So he should at least be happy about that. So we'll see how that goes. He's got a nice little six-week trial to see what he can do. And that's Danny Rodriguez. Matt Allen. I considered a potential trade for Matt Allen to free up some money. And I came up with some potential deals, but I didn't end up doing them. You know, I signed him. It, Matt Allen has just been so interesting to me this year. Remember, I signed him for 9.2 mil, which if he's just relieving, doesn't cut it. That's too much for a reliever in Miami. You know, for me, just in general, like you got to be top of the scale to be making 9.2 mil. I would have paid Nard Dog that at like his peak or whatever but come on and we'll get to nard dog in a moment by the way we're going to do a checkup on him but anyway the point was he's also going to start some i like his upside even though when you put at put him at starter his um his stuff was going down to 50 it's back it's back to 55 now but preseason it would go down to 50 as a starter and it was like oh dang 50 45 50 as a starter is not that good 55 45 50 is a bit more comforting and because of how much i like his raw stuff here when you look at the 70 fastball 65 curve and 50 change i was thinking like yeah he can build the stuff back up as a starter if we had to put him there we've been lucky that we haven't by the way pardon a little bit of sniffling i'll try not to be up in y'all's ears asmr sniffling because of uh, my recovery from COVID, but i'm back by, by the way i feel great i'm not even too worried a little bit of residual sniffles so Pardon me on that. I will try to be very mindful of not like <clears throat> up in y'all's ears and shit like that. So, but anyway, I ended up not trading him. And then things got weird with Matt Allen. And that leads me to All Stars, which that setup only tells you one thing Matt Allen made the fucking All Star game. Okay? Why? I don't know. But he did. Luis Becerra made it. Awesome. That makes sense. Big congrats to him. One of our big, first big prospects, actually. Probably our first big prospect. Yeah. Because other guys have contributed, like T-Money and Vasos, and they became prospects that were paying our first dividends. But our first, like, yo, this is a nice big prospect that we've developed, I believe it is Becerra. And he's a five-time top 100 guys since 2027 84 69 which was very nice 39 was his peak 57 48 and now he's in the majors and boom his first full year he's making oh no never mind last year he threw 121 80. that's a full year but it was a hybrid season 15 starts 25 relief appearances but that was a full year so his second season sophomore campaign for becerra all-star team he's got a 262 era 116 whip and about two and a half war in 106 and one third innings. So excellent, excellent work for him. Not only did Matt Allen make the all-star team, he started the game for the National League, y'all. What? What's going on? 580 ERA, 133 whip in 45 innings as a hybrid this year. Six starts, 14 relief appearances. Now, he's been awesome as a reliever. So I can even like get behind, you know, the fact that he's popular. Now, if he had made all-star teams before, cause this is his first one. If he'd made all-star teams before and he was kind of like, you know, one of those guys that, hey, he's, he's a dude kind of guy. And he's not having his best year, but he's still getting in on fan love because they see, okay, he's in the bullpen, he's killing it, sure. But there's no precedent. There's no precedent. He's never made the all-star team before what why why is he on this team now he was amazing as a reliever last year too great great but not only why is he on this team how the hell did he start the game what's going on he started the all-star game 
I don't get it. It was one of three starters for us, though, as uh, both Muller and J-Rod also made the team. J-Rod obviously didn't get to start, but he was voted in as a true starter. Muller did play. He went 0 for 1 with a walk. He was replaced by Maldonado, who ended up killing it. You guys, Alexis Maldonado is an absolute G. By the way, his nickname is number three, and he's number four. So that's interesting. He's never been number anything but number four. So I don't know. Maybe it's because he's the number three prospect in baseball one time, two times. I, I, I got nothing. I have no clue why that is. But anyway, continuing with the All-Stars there, in addition to Becerra and Matt Allen, we also had Caleb Ferguson make it. He's been having a wonderful season, 55 innings with a 278 ERA and 102 whip. Brilliant lefty for us. Big pickup. And then um, the two hitters, Muller and J-Rod. Other notables would be Noel Marte and Justin Vasos for Philly, two guys that we traded uh, this offseason. Muller was, or Marte was in the Muller deal. Vasos was in the Bustamante's deal. But uh, Noel Ve, crushing, 24 homers already, 3.6 war, 133 WRC+. Plus. Vasos, 146 WRC+. Plus. 19 homers and 310 at bats and 2.3 war so they both have been excellent hats off to them uh tim anderson just keeps going I'm, i point him out because for those of you that if you don't remember uh we were hard after him here in this 2025 off season when he went to boston he shunned us for boston and he's been like he was amazing with boston and then he's been still pretty good since so even if I had done like a mega long-term deal, I mean, it's easy to say now you don't know, but I don't know. I'm just not as comfortable with, with those, you know, seven, eight year type deals. And I couldn't get them on, on my shorter term and we lost out. So he's, he's still beasting. Uh, who else is notable that, uh, is in our sphere? Um, well, I think I saw Jason Dominguez. I did. Yes. With St. Louis. So he's still doing his thing over there he had a good season for them last year 26 homers 4.4 war in 112 games i'll say great season i said good no no let's make that great it was his best hitting performance ever he got out of miami and he's like yo there's a park that actually doesn't kill everything i hit not that st louis is a hitter's haven but uh, i think it's tougher than miami so he crushed there and he's crushing again now he's three homers shy of last year's total already but that again that goes back to the fact that he only played 112 games last year he's at 89 so far this year he is fragile injuries have been a big part of dominguez's career will he stay healthy this year i hope he does i'd like to see what he can do for a full buck 62. our boy willie vasquez i checked in on him i think i think last episode pointed out how brilliantly he's been playing he's already got four war this season 147 wrc plus he is killing it for the mariners i think he was in the other Marte deal right yeah, because, he, I mean, this is the mega deal with Colas and J-Rod. Yeah. So, basically, if you're in a Noelve Marte deal, you're going, you're going to the uh, you're going to the All-Star game. Uh, Pablo made it. Pablo Lopez. Big, big ups for him. He's made two All-Star teams. I think both with them, right? Yeah. So, he's still killing it. 324 ERA, 108 whip. Good for him. Anybody else from the American League? Nope. I don't see anybody else that, again, is like direct. Well, it's Kyle Tucker, of course. I mean, he's he's a beast. I'm surprised no uh, Torque. What's Torque up to? Is he having a rough year? <sighs> Excuse me there. You guys might have caught the tail end of that. I think I muted most of it, though. Oh, he's only played 13 games. Oh, damn. Oh, but he's back. So it must be 13 games. Like, he just got back. Fractured wrist, and he had a setback four months. So he did just get his season going. Okay, that makes some sense. Damn. Well, stay healthy, Torque. So that's the All Star. And next up would be oh Nard Dog. I said we do a Nard Dog check in. Let's go ahead and do that. Nardy. Now he has been starting this year, so. There's no real way to compare what he did with us, uh, you know, from the standpoint of, you know, is he still a God tier reliever? Probably would be, but we don't know. 98 innings and 18 starts with them, with Ast the Astros, 450 ERA, 142 whip. So, you know, in terms 
he, the interesting thing about this is like in terms of pure value, um, there there is still some value here. Is at 1.1 WAR. You know, it's about one win. And you know, if he puts up a second half, even kind of in this same vein, and gets you know two two and a half wins, it's not that far off from the kind of war that he delivered as a reliever. However, you do wonder like. Do you just go off the, of the straight war and say, okay, it is what it is, who cares? Or the context of that war and how it's, how it's created, you know, with him impacting so many games for us, 78, 84, 86, and 80 in the last four years, all of which led the league for Nardi, you know, he was getting his hand in half the games every year and having a positive effect on a large number of them because he was so good. I don't, I don't know the answer, to be honest. I, I think it really is a team context thing. It's kind of what you need. If they need a starter, they can deem this uh, just as valuable as, as if he was being a beast reliever. If their bullpen's set, but they need somebody who can eat up some innings as a starter, then, hey, they're fine with extracting the value this way because he's not bad. Like, the 142 whip is too high. That's bad. That's scary. But the 450 ERA is fine. If anything, that, that ERA is in danger if he keeps allowing batters at this clip. So I don't have the right answer on, on whether or not, you know, this is the, the right way to deploy. Uh, we preferred him as a stud-ass reliever, getting all those innings out of the bullpen. And I don't think I would have changed that, but I think it was Cage Wisdom who called it right away and said somebody's going to use him as a starter and dead on. So now I'm at a little bit of a pivot point. I'm wondering, should we do the draft or? Yeah, okay, okay. So here's what we're going to do. Pardon me again. Oh, I didn't mute it that time. But I don't want to be sniffling all over the joint. That's like the only lingering factor that I have from from the COVID. Other than that, I'm good. First few days, I was sleeping like crazy. But now, I'm back staying up at, uh, you know, regular times. Uh, anyway, so, next two things that we're going to do are the draft and, like, a tour of the league to try to learn more about the league and where it's at right now. And each of the, like, it's not both of those in the same episode. That's a long, long episode. So I was thinking of, you know, should we do the Meet the League right now since we've kind of been doing this other stuff or just do the draft? And that's kind of what I'm, I'm trying to figure out right now. And I think, I think we'll do the draft and then I'll do the Meet the League episode as its own full thing. Um, and, and from the jump, we'll just kind of start touring the teams, get a little bit of knowledge about them, see who's doing what what their makeup is, just to kind of learn more. Not just for y'all's sake, but for mine. Like, I know a lot of what's going on around things, but not not everything, not enough. And as we get further away from, you know, being able to just kind of look at a team, see all the names, and have judgments about those players, because we know those players, we need to start learning, you know, who the, who the go-to guys are. Sure, we know some of these guys that have been around, Alexis Maldonado, uh, who I mentioned earlier for the Mets, you know, absolute stud. Actually, I've done a couple uh, retakes. I don't know if I did mention it. Well, anyway, Mueller started and then Maldonado came in. I was talking about how he's on pace for 100 steals this year. You know, so we know we know certain guys. Malfred Sosa, I bought, brought him up a few times. He's an absolute beast. Sammy Sosa's kid, not really. Sometimes I have to make sure that you guys understand that I'm joking because, like, that's not implausible right especially the time frame that we're in and all these players and this even says comes from a bloodline of ball players but i don't think he actually i'm gonna look it up there's no way right there's no way malfred sosa i mean that is a real player i know that but i don't think he's actually related to sammy somebody would have mentioned that at some point yeah, no, I don't see anything like that. I think I think the uh, the comment about the ball players thing that's just an OOTP thing. But anyway, I want to take us around the league, figure out who all these guys are. I just learned about Bryce Bush the other day because I was looking up power hitters in the league. He's thirty. He's been a power stud for a minute, and I just learned about him in the off season. I think this year. So like, that's bad. And so we'll do that next episode. Let's finish this episode up with our draft, which I think was a pretty good one. So. First things first, I got a few players I want to show you. One thing, I changed the name, okay? Now, I don't edit the draft class. I take what they give us, okay? Because why not? You know, that's that's the fun of it. So, um, the only thing I'll ever edit is like cosmetic things. And boy, did I. <laughs> I saw a guy, his name was Luis Vega. 
And I was like, okay, that's a perfectly fine name, but what if his name was Lou Bega? And his nickname was Mambo, and his number was, of course, five. Not one, five. Damn it, we're gonna, we're gonna cut whoever is number five right now. Uh, but anyway, that I, cha I changed his name. That's it. I just wanted you guys to know that. Uh, round seven pick. Maybe I should have gotten him. I'm not going to go and worry about the number of that team right now. But just know in his heart, in your heart. Oh, I changed his birthday too. I made him born on Cinco de Mayo because that's May 5th, of course. So that's cool to me. Oh, this guy had a whack nickname. I can't remember what it is now, so I'm glad we're checking. Oh, yeah. This guy, Daniel Lumpkin, was nicknamed Fourth Lord. What the hell? And nobody, uh, nobody signed him? Oh, the freaking Rockies, dude. Oh, wait, it's not. Never mind. There's plenty of time left. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I was just going off of this here where it's like uh, I saw the no team, I, I, the draft eligible thing. I think I transposed the, the 2033 onto Daniel, and I was like, what? But no, no, no. He, the Rockies will probably sign him. But anyway, he's a potential G, and I just thought Fourth Lord was funny. I don't know what the hell that means. So I, that might be like less funny or have a real meaning of some sort, but I don't know what the hell Fourth Lord means. I just saw it and it made me laugh. So there's him. And then there was one other guy before we get into our draft picks that I wanted to look at. Was it, was it this guy? Oh yeah, yeah, this, this was not a draft thing. Sorry, sorry, he was on the list. I was supposed to check on him after Nard Dog. This Caden Wallace guy, sorry, complete pivot. He's a two-way player, but as a reliever. So it's kind of interesting. Like he's not a stud pitcher, 45, 50, 45, but like, you know, 60 stamina, like he can pitch, but he can also hit like pretty well. What this kind of strikes me as, um, and this guy isn't doing this in the majors. He didn't really pitch that much, but I think he could have if like a team really wanted to. But uh, it's Jake Cronenworth. I think like when Jake Cronenworth was traded out to San Diego, one of the things that was talked about of, about him was like, oh, he pitched a bit in the minors. And it was a very scant bit, mind you. Um, it was more of like a blip, but it was just pointing out that, oh, he could do this. The, the Rays, you know, let him pitch a little bit there. That's kind of what it was. I just found this pretty interesting because we aren't currently seeing anybody do it like this in the majors where they're hitting, and he's hitting quite well, 2.4 war, 136 WRC plus, and then just like occasionally kind of um, spot starting. He's not relieving. Never mind. I'm completely full of crap. He's not, I just saw 24 innings. I was like, oh, he's relieving. He's spot starting. And he did last year too, eight starts, three relief appearances. So he's relieved before, but this year it's only been four spot starts. So they just kind of have like this extra arm when they need somebody. And that's, that's pretty useful too. So you're not like relying upon him. Obviously the Otani model is the, the peak of what can happen with a two-way player, clearly. But this is an interesting, uh, this is an interesting way too. I wonder in practice, in real life, like how this would work in terms of keeping him loose, keeping him ready to go without any sort of consistent uh, pitching. You know, the, the starts were on, well, this one had to be a minor league, or a spring training 319. So 418, 423, 420. Okay, so he was in the rotation for a spell there, right? Those three are kind of in order. And then June 8th. Okay, so then he was just like, not pitching for two months or for a month plus and then boom dropped eight innings strong at texas that's interesting so i don't know caden wallace but sorry i should have done that after nard dog uh that's what happens when you don't follow the 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 sheet it was there for a reason go in the order that it's listed you stupid idiot i don't know for some reason i thought he might have been a drafty speaking of draftees let's look at ours we had many picks many many picks so we're gonna go through them first overall pick was a guy named Juan Andrade and I don't think that the Mariners did great here um, at least according to our scout he doesn't really like this guy that much 21 year old I mean almost 23 already or almost 23 he's skipping 22 almost 22 you know 21 in 225 days so you know we're not that far removed from him being 22 and like 
I'm probably I'm, I'm underselling the 80 stuff a little bit 80 stuff is freaking bananas if he pans out to that like that's that's crazy good so I, I I grant that okay but then like 45 movement 40 control it's I don't know it, it the the floor is at least an elite reliever right like that that part seems pretty safe to say because you just put him in there and let him turn it loose great he does have 65 stamina so yeah i think i think i am i am selling th just the overpowering stuff a little short they're getting too hooked on the 45 40 of the momentum control movement and control rather so okay I'm i'll peel back a little bit on my disdain for this pick and say it's not that it's not bad it's not bad he projects to 3.4 war at that peak 337 era 198 average against with 12.9 k's per nine so yeah that would be pretty that'd be pretty grimy and i don't even remember the pitcher let's see this guy went was the second pitcher taken so this guy rodolfo ordanana is a 17 year old about to be 18 here in a second basically and uh, he's 75, 60, 65, but he's also 17 years old. Now he has high work ethic. So I don't know, which one Which one would you go with? The high school arm or the college arm? I, is it is it that a high school righty's never gone 1-1? One, one? Is, that, is that the thing? There's some like player class that's like never gone 1-1 one, one or something. I, I don't mean like, oh, there's been, never been a 1-1 one, one DH. I mean, of the classes that get drafted high. I think it's high school righty maybe i don't know but anyway what do you think of rodolfo there versus uh, uh andre i don't know but but that number one pick is not as bad as i thought because that stuff is so 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 dominant anyway we had the 28th pick and we took a starter who i think is every bit as good as andre uh we took a 17 year old his nickname is Robert Miri Miri. And you're like, oh, well, Paul changed this name too. Must have, right? Nope, actually didn't. Swear to God. Uh, it's just his nickname, or his name is Robert Miri Miri, which is cool. I'm, I'm, I'm completely with it. So he's a 70, 50, 65 potential with 55 stamina and 50 hold runner. That projects him out to a 4.1 war at peak, 315 ERA, 108 whip. So according to the projections, our guy could be better and we got him 27 picks later so get smoked but I'm, I'm actually really happy about him that change up could be amazing a potential 80 potential 70 curveball potential 65 heat piece there high green low leader not too worried about that it says his mind tends to wander so that's not great but uh, i don't think we're gonna get an awful personality class here and again a green stir doesn't really bother me if he's great we'll pay you you know, I got no problem with that. I'm not going to shortchange you if you're an absolute G. So then we go into the second round and we scooped Jose Nava, who's another pitcher. Pardon me. 18 year old righty, uh, excuse me, 18 year old lefty out of Florida. 60, 50, 45 potential there with 70 stam, 75 hold runner. Hold runner's not an end all be all. Like he could have been a 30 hold runner and I. I would have been fine with that, but I do like when uh, when both lines are are blue on the stamina hold runners. It just it looks better, you know. It just looks better. Nobody's uh, drafting anybody due to their hold runner, but uh, you know I don't want people running on us. That's all I'm saying. He projects to a 2.2 WAR at his peak. Felt pretty good about getting him. And by the way, you might start to notice a bit of a theme. We did take a lot of pitchers. Actually, there's a better way to do this, and I'm going to do that right now. Please hold. We will go over here. Minor leagues. Draft year. Edit that. And make it 2030. Go all players. Wait a minute. Is there something else filtering this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we're cooking. Wait, where's everyone else? Maybe not. Oh, are they not signed yet? Yeah, okay, never mind. Thought I had a good idea. It would be if I did this later. I, I have to go this way. So, third round, we took Mike D. Santiago. Now, I will tell you this. Let me go back real quick. So, first, first round here with Miri Miri. 
quite contrary. He had a, can they not, are they gonna show their demands on here? That's annoying. I guess I can find it right here. So he had a 4.5, 4.6, let's call it, uh, demand. And I was like, okay, that's, that's a grip, but we can pay. In fact, we got some money in the bank. So if we find the ability to spend here, if, if there's some guys out there, maybe we can push a little bit. But the beauty of Nava, and you, you saw there that he had uh, our second round pick, Nava had low greed. He wasn't kidding, y'all. He really put his money where, his, where the lack of money where his mouth is because we got home, dude, for 290, 290,000 for Nava. That's pretty good for a 60 potential pitcher. Felt excellent about that. And where did those savings come in handy? In the third round with Mike D. Santiago, an 80 potential, but we got to pay a grip for him, 5.5 mil. So again, it was good that we had some money that we could we could splash around in this draft because we spent, I think we spent like 13 mil in this draft and we'll keep getting into these guys but look mike mike de santiago plays everywhere already has six positions on the ledger you know he could add third base if he's this good everywhere else he's his best in a corner outfield um you know 45 shortstop 55 second base maybe he's gonna be what like a 50 at, at third then split the difference uh actually his arms are 45 so maybe a little bit maybe a little bit worse even maybe a 40 over there i don't know are guys ever worse at third than they are at short I, I don't know, but maybe just a 45 at third. Either way, I'm looking at corner outfield anyway. 75, 65, 60, 50, 75 are the numbers. The pertinence, of course, are the 75 contact and avoid Ks and the 60 home run power. He's also pretty fast at 65 speed, 50 stealing, but only 45 base running. He does have low greed as meant, uh, or no, no, that was mentioned about Nava. He has low greed, although he was pretty expensive. So he's got low greed overall, but that did not show when it came to his bonus. I wonder, should I have undercut him a little bit? Now nah, it was too risky. I gave him his five, 5.5. 5. You know, this slot here was 960, 960,000. Obviously I would never offer that low. I wonder if I could offer like three mil maybe. I don't know. It would have been too risky. He's an 80 potential. I know that, you know, an 18 year old with an 80, they're almost never reaching it. But to get that as a third round pick, I, I thought I had to take the shot. So we went for it. You know, we spent some money in the draft. That's a spot to spend. Um, so we pushed it. We had that money and we and we said, let's do it. And then from there, we continued. I forget. I think fifth round is when our picks, our extra picks start to come in. So... They're, they're, oh, you know what? Hey, maybe this is better. Is there a way to do this where I can get them, where I can get it to show my team? Oh, damn it. I knew that was going to happen. Um, I don't know. And obviously, this is a video, so you guys can't help me with that right now. You can tell me for the future, of course. But at this very moment, it's going to be hard for you all to actually... Oh, here we go. It, it is going to work. Let's go. Wait, it's probably only going to work if they're signed. Never mind. Damn it. So, and you have to put in the freaking exact uh, exact team. Like like what what organization? Yeah, yeah. Never mind. That's not going to work. Okay, I, I got to just keep going this way. I'm sorry. This is not the most efficient way to do this. Uh, our fourth round pick. We went back to the well with a hitter. So now we're two and two. A 50 potential shortstop, Devin Antonados. 75 contact potential, 95 potential on the avoid Ks. You know I had to jump on that. And um, only 45 on the home run power. So, you know, it's not going to be some crazy guy crushing the ball over the joint. But <clears throat> I like him. 65 speed. Not much for the defense. 40, 45, second and third respectively. And defensive ratings that back that up 40 40 range so that part's shit but at 17 maybe he can develop a bit maybe he can develop but if not you know we hide him at second or, or figure something out with him i'm not i'm not too worried about that he has he does have straight 55s in the outfield so i really think an outfield spot is, is where he ends up too could also pitch a smidge he's 40 50 50 
with 75 stamina, 65 hold runners. So like there's avenues here. I thought he was uh, an absolute G. And I want to say he was pretty cheap too. Let me look. Yeah, 290,000 as well similar to novice so also under slot so we did make up money in different spots um for our big you know our, our big tickets there with miri miri and de santiago so the fifth round we started picking early because we had the fourth pick in that round and we got oscar Salas back to the mound here with a 45 potential guy 50 45 50 on his uh stuff movement control only 35 potential changeup, so there is a little bit of a, a relief risk there if it doesn't come through. And he's got low intelligence, so hope hope that doesn't totally cost him. But 75 stamina, so if he can if he can figure it out and that third pitch is there, that could be wonderful for him. So just another arm, and like I said, you will notice that theme. I did start to really kind of lean in on arms. Then we had the 13th pick of this round, and guess what? We went for an arm. <laughs> Luis Osorio, <clears throat> he's 40 potential. Now, he does look more like the relief end. I can't prove it. I want to say he had better than a 25 potential changeup, but would it change that quickly? I don't I don't think so, because I haven't even sim a day since. So I think I just... I think I'm just imagining. Actually, you know what? I know exactly what it is. He had the 75 stamina. Um, and yes, only the two pitches, but the two one, the two that he has are both 70 potential. The reason I still took him was because he has a high work ethic, and I was hoping that they could cultivate a change. So that's right. That's what it was. It did not change because how could it? Because I haven't even advanced. But also, it, it just didn't. That that was my thought process. I didn't, I didn't take him thinking like, oh, I'm committed to a reliever here. I thought maybe Osorio can learn a changeup, get it up to like a 40, and then you go 70, 70, 40 on your fastball curveball changeup. We can live with that. So we'll see. He's a project for sure, uh, but he's starting at durable injury proneness as well, which we'll always take uh, from a pitching prospect. And then our third pick of the round, 26th, uh, our normal pick was Danny Miranda. And he is, he just turned 19 two days ago. Happy birthday. A birthday present you get to join our wonderful pitching organization which you know that's no joke we are awesome at, at pitching that's the one thing we got he does have low adaptability and low work ethic and you know i don't love that profile in fact i quite hate it but as i always say don't let that be you know the end all be all and you don't draft players because of that or something if you try to avoid it as a general rule i get that but i thought he was the best pitcher to go for here with three legit pitches, 75 stamina, 55, 45, 50 on the stuff movement control. I just thought he was somebody to go for. Says he's bright and vocal. He could learn more and be more positive if he tried. But like, if, if he's bright and vocal, it feels like maybe we can figure some things out, even though he got the low work ethic and low adaptability. Says like he's not stupid based on him being bright. Maybe they can kind of get him, get him on the right path there and, Hopefully our coaching can bring home a little bit more and maybe even up his velo because it's 89.91 so far. Then we go to the sixth round. I think we had three picks again this round, but I'll have to find them. The first one was the 14th pick of the sixth round. We got Nick Noel. And now he's a 50 potential pitcher. Does look more like a reliever there with the two pitches, only 35 potential change up. So we'll see. Um, 65 stamina and we'll see what happens with that you know 60 65 35 on his three pitches a 35 you can you can make that work i would prefer if you only have the three pitches though that that third pitch is at least a 40. i know it's only five points but it just it feels so much better but he might even be relief for relief risk anyway which is okay in the sixth round you know, it's not the end of the world. Every pitcher you draft is truly a relief risk because that's just the way pitchers are. But obviously, the deeper you get in the draft, the more you're like not going to lose your mind. Sorry, I am checking my phone right now uh, because when I do see uh, an MLB thing, I have to check it because we are at the trade deadline. And I just want to make sure th there are deals. It's it, The Braves are working on deals right now. They're getting uh, Odorizzi. For Will Smith, there's the Astros lefty. I knew they were going to get a lefty. And then they're getting, oh, Robbie Grossman from my Tigers. Okay, so my apologies there. I know it's, it's very unprofessional, but uh, it's deadline time. So I, I, I decided I was like, I want to make a Marlins video tonight, but I got to still keep at least a little bit of a finger on the pulse of the potential trades. 
But anyway, Nick Noel, our first third round pick, or our first, excuse me, our first of three sixth round picks, pardon me. Uh, next up, we picked three picks after that. Or no, no, four picks after that. We got Orlando Aguilar, pitcher out of uh, California, right-hand starter, 55-40-55. He's got a 40 potential. He's got uh, three good pitches and then like a 40 splitter that's trying to come along. He doesn't really need it, though, because the 70 potential changeup, 65 potential slider, 50 potential fastball, that'll cover you with the 65 stammy. He's got a high work ethic. Lots to like here from Aguilar. And, again, uh, durable. A few guys. I was noticing a lot more. Maybe that's in a lot of drafts, and I just haven't noticed. Um, but I it, I did take notice in this draft specifically. There were a lot of durable injury proneness guys. And so I was like, hey, that's a good little tiebreaker right there. Because, again, at least you're starting from the best spot that you can uh, in terms of health because pitchers get hurt. And then our last pick, again, our own at 26, was Edwin Ortiz, right-handed starter out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 40 potential. He's got 45, 50, 50. Nothing too crazy here. 50 stamina, but great personality class. Very competitive. His enthusiasm is contagious. High leader, adaptability, and work ethic. Could maybe extract another level here. Wouldn't surprise me if he could round into like a 50-55 potential type um, if things really click with our coaches and we get things turned around. Uh, as expected, this did not surprise me when I got a comment on this, but somebody pointed out that our minor league records can absolutely have major problems on our development because they're so unbelievably horrendous. Like they're impossibly bad, y'all. 14 and 61 at double A, like that's that's embarrassing. 22 and 53 at high A, 20 and 55 at A, and like the A and high A have been shit pretty much throughout the franchise. It's been a problem. Double A and triple A have been less embarrassing. I, I don't have like titles in those leagues or even many playoff appearances, but they're not usually as gut-wrenchingly bad. So gotta figure some things out there, gotta get more talent flowing through properly so that uh they're not just the, the dregs of the world because that that wears on guys and they're gonna it's gonna stunt some of the development round seven i don't know if we had multiple picks here so we'll have to be careful to look nope just our own pick and we got jordan amezica a lefty starter out of hawaii 45, 45, 50, 35 potential. Has 80 stamina, though. The 80 stamina, 75 home runner was enough to get me to take him, even though he's low work ethic. I mean, I think if he just kind of develops as is, he could he could be like a fifth starter rotation filler and just eat up innings. Um, need more than 86, 89 on the velo, but he's 18. He has time to develop that. But yeah, there could be a little something there. You know, he's, he's not greedy, at least low greed, but uh, low work ethic too, and that's that's a bit of a bummer. So we'll see how that develops there. I'm not, uh, you know, pitting a ton of hopes on a seventh round pick. It's more pitching depth though that we need. On to the eighth round, we took uh, we had two picks this round. We took Jordan Frazier with the first pick, a uh, batter, just just pure hitter here and he was still available he's a 50 potential no defensive value whatsoever he's like a dh maybe first base uh 18 year old but he has like 55s down the line pretty much 55 contact gap home run 65 potential i and 50 k's so just just a bat basically the thing of it is if he starts to develop he becomes a trade chip like that that's that's really the goal here is to see him start to start to develop and become a little something and then move him because he's he's already at the lowest end of the defensive spectrum with no real hope of getting out even with a good work ethic i don't really see where it would come from he has no speed so he's not gonna go out of the outfield there's just nothing but that bat and if you can hit there's a spot for you somewhere in the majors or somewhere in baseball right now we'll see if he can get to the majors but uh I, that's why i just took him i thought it was too good a value to not go ahead and take him try to cultivate him a bit and flip him and that was pick 15 of that round and then our pick at 26 i took tony arroyo right-handed starter out of or excuse me right-handed reliever he does have 50 stam but only two pitches that change up only getting up to a 30. they think he's a reliever too i get it another guy starting at the durable injury proneness which we like 75 stuff 40 movement 50 control a little sidearm piece he's out there being funky and uh you know high work ethic as well low greed we'll take it then we moved on to the ninth round 
and I think we just had our pick here, and I think we can just have our pick from here on out. We might have even traded a pick somewhere, but we'll get to that. Ninth pick, and I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna go through the entire draft. I think we'll stop at like, we'll do we'll do like till round twelve. We'll do nine, ten, eleven, and twelve real quick. So Crespo, Frank Crespo, twenty-one year old, almost twenty-two, college arm. He's a reliever, but he's a reliever who. I mean, is definitely not going to complex ball. He, sh he should be, frankly, he could be in triple A. I'm going to move him to double A, though, uh, because he's got 45 stuff right now with 65 upside, but he is 25-25 on the movement and control with 35-45 potentials. But he's got his fastball and slider already working. They're great. Great stamina, but come on, that stamina uh, is not going to serve you that well when you've only got two pitches. But he could be a quick... Quick, uh, quick riser here and get to the majors in relatively short order, maybe next year uh, or something. So we'll start him at double A and we'll see if he can hang there. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's too aggressive with the movement and control. Yeah, I'm moving back to... We'll go high A right now. He's like, I'm already getting demoted. What the heck? <laughs> My bad, Frank. Freaking Frank Crespo. All right, 10th round. We just had our pick and we took Jason Hines. 17 year old about to be 18 here in about 40 days just over a month and uh, just another hitter type that i was like okay you know the defense there's more defensive potential than frazier uh for a corner outfield potential he's got a 60 arm 45 range 35 error so you know that could develop into a decent enough corner outfielder with high work ethic especially but we got him for the hitting uh, only 40 contact and 40 avoid K, but 65 gap, 65 home run, 55 I. So prototypical power hitter type. Gonna have some swing and miss in his game, but when he when he gets to it, he can crush. And he can take his walks as well. So Jason Hines could be something. And with his work ethic, again, maybe we extract that extra bit of value to where he can actually hold a corner outfield spot, and then we have more than just a hitter. But if it does happen to go the other way as far as the defense, and we're developing as a hitter. Again, trade piece like Frazier. 11th round, we took Orlando Delgado. Not another pitcher, this time a hitter. Uh, out of Michigan, a utility type. Well, actually, he's only a third base right now. Never mind. Uh, I thought we took a utility guy. We probably did somewhere, but the, the wrong one. Because he's a switch hitter. That I think that's our, what the utility guy that I took is. And that's why I assumed it was him. But he's got a big arm. He has a 70 infield arm and 70 outfield arm, but weirdly couldn't pitch at all. I know those two aren't like necessarily 100% linked, but I, I would have thought with such a strong arm that there'd be a, a tinge of pitching potential. Uh, but Delgado, you know, can play third, uh, you know, high adaptability and work ethic, so good personality class. 45-45 on the contact and gap, 50 on the homer, 65 on the I, 55 on the avoid Ks, the average speed. Not too bad. It's an 11th round pick. What do you expect? And then the last one I'm going to dive into right now um, is Sal Gomez. Now, this guy was recommended to me by uh, Greenwell a few different times. And I was like, nah, there was other guys I liked, including like Frazier and uh, um, who was the Jason guy? What was Jason's last name? God, I'm so... Jason Hines. And I took both of them ahead of him. And then Gomez was still there. And I was like, okay, well, now I'll take him. He's a little bit of a lesser version of, of Hines, basically, where he's got the good power, 60 on the gap in home run, 55 I, 45 contact, 50 avoid Ks. Challenged defensively, though. So, you know, again, a little bit of a lesser version of that, but durable on the injury proneness. Not as important for a hitter, but we'll take it all day. So, Sal Gomez, not too bad. And what I'll do is I'll go through rounds 13 to 20 uh, by myself and pluck like the, the, the potential gem out of there, okay? Because I, I don't have that committed to memory right now. Actually, I will show you the round 13 pick I got to because I took him for one reason and one reason only. Xavier Curley has an 80 catcher ability. And I was like, I have to take him. I have to. Also starting injury prone is durable. I'm telling you, there was a ton more this draft. It, it feels, it feels 
like it can just be coincidence, but it probably is. When in doubt, it, it probably is just coincidence, but it felt like there were extras. Uh, but yeah, 80 catcher ability, high intelligence, 55 eye, 50 K avoid case. Don't worry about the others. <laughs> 40 on the contact gap and 30 on the home run power. But hey, he's very smart and he's a good catcher. I think, actually, I can look it up. Yeah, even with that dreadful ass bat, in the projector, he still had 1.1 war because of the 80 catching ability. So well, I know catcher ability has been muted this year from, from its normal peak. You can't tell me that an 80 still isn't good. I'm not hearing it. So yeah, but then rounds 14 through 20, I'll pick like the gem of that so I can let you guys know um, any of those late rounders. But I gave, you the, the, I gave you the bulk of it, right? When we were picking three times in the fifth and sixth round, um, you know, so that's six picks there. So that's our first 10 picks all came in within the, the first six rounds. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good influx of talent. I'm excited to see what we can do uh, with these guys. And like I said, we got to get this talent better here so that we're not losing so many damn games, man. It's bad. It's bad, bad, bad. And it's got to be better. And that's on me. So I'll be working on that. And we'll see. We'll see where it goes. So that's the draft, the all-star break kind of get you caught up there like i said next episode we're gonna do just like a rundown of pretty much every team so it'll be a little bit of a longer one but i'll try to keep the pace going well i i think i am gonna go through and like kind of um, pre-study there so i know where we're going with things because i don't want it to meander if it's a long video and it's purposeful and it has things that are you know flowing and and you guys are interested in it that's okay but i don't want to be meandering like looking for things on every team so i'm gonna go through do the do the pre-work on it so i have the things i want to talk about the storylines the players and we'll do it that way so that will be coming up uh probably episode 53 yeah we might as well just do it now and kind of get into it plus actually you know what what, what if we do it like this because we're in the middle of the season right this is playoff potential season what if we break this up a little bit because that is going to be a long episode to cover all, all uh, 29 other teams. What if we do like a meet the contenders first? And what I'll do is I'll break down the AL contenders and the NL contenders. So we get the lay of the land on the quality teams first. And then in the off season, we meet the dregs. Or the, you know, the middle end and the lower end team. Not the dregs. That, that's a shitty way to put it. But you know, the, the teams that are a bit lower uh, on the scale right now. In their in their win curve okay that's the nice way to put it so you're, you're looking like from pittsburgh on down and i, I like what's the cutoff right you got to make a cutoff somewhere the mets will include because they're in our division they're a competitor of ours they're not doing all that well uh they are definitely the outlier in our division but we'll, we'll go mets up um and then of course the divisions oh we got chris anglin yo the tigers got anglin we're angling for a dub i always make that stupid joke about this guy and that's who they got for for Robbie Grossman. Cool. I don't really know anything about him except from this game. I don't even know how he wound up on Milwaukee. He was traded for Edwin. That Edwin Diaz. <laughs> Damn. Okay. It was that that Edwin Diaz. So we'll see. I mean, he seems like uh, he could be a decent enough arm. I mean, it's a rental Robbie Grossman. It's he's not going to be stud. Uh, anyway, but then in the AL, as far as the contenders, I think we'll do. You know, we'll do the Royals in up because I, I realize that the Angels and White Sox, Mariners, and even the Rays and, and Ashes. I mean, honestly, Oakland's the only team that's really out of it, but let's let's make a cutoff somewhere. So we'll say, again, KC in up for the AL, Mets in up for the NL, and we'll do a meet the contenders video first. The other teams will be in the offseason, and uh, that's how we'll proceed. And then, like I said, we got to get into the rest of the season here because this is an exciting one. We'll have a trade deadline that we'll have to cover. I don't know that we'll be able to do anything. I don't know that we necessarily need to either. We need to get J-Rod back on the field. Um, I don't know you know, how much money flexibility we're going to have. I moved the ticket prices up to 33. They were at like 31 something. So I didn't move it up crazy, but hopefully people keep coming. So we'll see how it all goes. But thank you all so much for watching. Episode 53, we'll be back later this week. Peace.